Hi, it's Glassboxed here and today we're going to discuss a little bit more about feature files and we're going to write a step definition class for our feature file. We're going to jump straight into it and have a look. So firstly, following on from our previous tutorial, we learned some really basic stuff around feature files. So to kick this tutorial off, let's have a look at a feature file that I've written. So this feature file is still inside the features folder and I've slightly changed it to include a few more things for the purpose of explaining to you the makeup and construct of a feature file. So firstly, we have a feature tag. A feature tag is used to describe the number of test cases or rather the specifics of the type of test cases you will find in a feature file. A feature file typically only has one feature tag. A feature file can also have multiple scenario tags. A scenario tag is used to describe an actual test. You can almost say that a scenario tag is basically a test. So that means a feature file which describes the types of tests that can be found in that feature file. A feature file can contain multiple scenarios. A scenario which contains these steps are called test steps. And when we describe a test step using the keywords given, when, and then, these are referred to as Gherkin steps. So Gherkin steps are basically steps which use the keywords given, when, and then. Another way to think of it is a given is some condition, some premise. A when is your action, so you perform an action to do something. And a then is your expected result. So this is where you would be checking for something. Typically, a test is just that. You have some test fixture, you have some action, and then you have some kind of assertion. So a scenario is essentially just that. It is a test. If we look at our feature file, we are going to check that main tutorial course pages have loaded in the testroom.com. So that means as part of our feature file, we're expected to contain scenarios in this feature file which check to see that certain main tutorial course pages have loaded. Our first scenario is to check that the Cucumber tutorial main page has loaded. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to assume that we navigate to the test room and that when we navigate to the test room, we are able to click on this particular link. And once we've done that, we should check to see that the title of the page is visible. And that's it. So you should now have an understanding of what a feature file is and what are needed to actually make a feature file look like a feature file. The next thing we're going to do now is actually start to write our step definition. To do this and to make our life easier, let's run our feature file. So if you remember from our last tutorial when we ran the feature file, we actually got a number of code snippets generated for us. Great. So when we run our feature file, it was able to run the feature file without any issues. But it also said that it wasn't able to find any step definitions for a given step. So this is great because Cucumber is essentially helping us generate some code. Now, we may or may not use this code going ahead. For now, we will, as this is a great way of really getting some code snippets generated for us. But before we do that, let's have a quick look what's actually happening. At some point, when Cucumber ran the test, it tried to find code snippets or step definitions for each of the step, and it wasn't able to find any. So what it said was, you have a total of one scenario of which is undefined, and a total of three steps across all scenarios which are also undefined. When something comes back as undefined, that is the same as saying, I was not able to find any matching code for any of the test steps that I was asked to run. So what Cucumber does is it generates the test steps for us. So we can actually use this information. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna copy this and keep it in memory for now and we'll use it a little later on. 
So what we want to do now is actually start writing some step definitions. So before we do that, let's go ahead and actually make a directory which will contain our step definitions. So what I'm going to do is use make directory and I'm going to create a directory called step definition and I'm going to cd into that. So now you can see I am in the step definition directory and I'm going to use touch to create a Java class called my first step definition.java and I'm going to vi into that. Great. So now we're going to start writing a really basic Java class. So the first thing I'm going to do is put the whole thing in a package and I'm going to put it in the step definition package. And I'm also going to need to import in some libraries which I downloaded and placed in the JARS file. So I'm going to import in cucumber.api.java.en.star and then semicolon and that's going to import in everything. I'm also going to need to use the cucumber.api.java pending exception okay uh, so now I'm going to actually start writing the Java class so I need to be public class and let's give it the same name so it was my first step definition And I'm going to paste in all the stuff that I copied in from the generated code. Oops. Okay, looks like I've lost the code for it somehow. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to go back and I'm just going to copy all of this. And I'm going to paste it in here. Okay. So it looks like it missed out a few things. So let me really quickly format this. Okay, so I've formatted the whole thing to be a little bit more indented. So all we've done is we've created a package, or rather we've given it the same package as the folder that it is in. So we can see here it says step definition. So I've put it in the same package. We've imported in all the Java classes that are needed, in which case this is essentially the given, when, and then. And we've also uh, imported in the pending exception which is thrown as part of each step so let's save this great so now what we need to do is actually compile the class that we've just created right so I've just cleared my screen as to take away some of the noise the first thing I need to do is actually compile the step definition class that we just created and we're going to use Java to do that so Java is basically Java compiler so we're going to do the same thing as we did in the previous tutorial. We're going to pass in the jars to the class path. And now we're going to provide the location to our step definition file, which is here. So if I hit enter now, great. So it looks like it was able to compile our step definition class without any issues. As of when you compile your class, if you get issues here, then this is where Java will try to tell you that it is unable to compile your class because of some reason or another. Um, there might be a syntactical error, there could be a whole host of things. Um, if you just want to copy in the step definition class as it is, then just refer to my post at the testroom.com tutorial and you can just copy paste the whole thing in from there. Anyway, with our class now compiled, let's try and run the feature file again and see what happens. So that's Java class path. And this time we're going to do something new. We're also going to provide uh, multiple class paths. Or rather, we're going to provide uh, multiple values for the same class path. So here we're providing the jars and to date, this is what we have been doing. But you can actually provide multiple um, inputs to your class path. And the other input we're going to provide is the current Cucumber project directory, in this case, with a dot. Now on Windows, if you want to provide, say, multiple inputs to a class path, 
you separate each input using the semicolon. But on other systems, Linux for instance, I think it's a colon. Anyway, we are now going to tell Cucumber to run well, Cucumber, so that's Cucumber dot API dot CLI dot main. We're going to use the pretty format and now this is where things get a bit different. Previously we just said this feature and, and, and that was it. If we run this, we will still get the same issue. It says it doesn't know where our step definition class is. However, we can provide what's called the glue parameter. The glue parameter is used to tell Cucumber where your step definition classes are. In other words, when you provide the glue parameter, Cucumber will try to glue each of your feature file to step definition classes. To be more specific, it will try to match any given test step it finds in your feature file to a step definition code in step definition classes. So all we're going to say is we can find the glue code in our step definition directory and then followed by feature. So let's run this and see what happens. Great. It looks like Cucumber was able to match up, at least for the first step anyway, some step definition code to our test step in our feature file. So this now proves that Cucumber is able to match up test steps in a feature file against step definition code in a step definition class. So this is really good. So if we analyze this, what's actually happening here? If you have a look at this output here, what this is saying is it had a total of one scenario of which one is pending. Now this is different to our previous output where it said one was undefined. When something is undefined, when a scenario is undefined, that is the same as saying every single test step in that scenario contains test steps which I cannot match code for. But in this instance, it was able to, at least for the first step anyway, find some code. So now this scenario has changed from undefined to pending. For our actual steps, notice that it says one pending and two skipped. See, the way Cucumber works is for a given scenario, if a particular step fails for whatever reason, i.e. There, there may be a code failure or the actual step might have failed, it doesn't bother trying to run the remaining steps because there is no point. For a given scenario to pass, every single step in that scenario must pass. Therefore, the reason why we have two skipped is because that is what Cucumber's done. It has skipped two of the steps because one step has already failed. And the reason it's failed is because that test code for that step is throwing a pending exception. So this is good because this is what we actually expected. So let's go back to our step definition class again and change it to not throw these exceptions anymore. And instead what we're going to do is just do some really basic print statements. So I'm going to say system dot out dot print line and I'm going to say something like going to the testroom.com and let's just save it here. So now we're expecting the first step to pass, but the second step to now throw a pending exception. So let's compile our class again. And let's run the cucumber code again. And now notice it says one passed, one pending, and one skipped because now the first step has passed. And if you have a look, it's also printed out the print statement. So this is how cucumber works when it tries to match up a given step against a step definition code in a step definition class. Let's quickly go back to our step definition class and now change them all to print out something instead. Uh, 
Okay, and let's save this. So now when we compile the class, and oh, okay. So it was unable to compile the class because it found an error. So this is what I was talking about. If for some bizarre reason you have an error, a syntactical error or something, and you try to compile the class, Java will tell you that there's been an issue. So it looks like I missed out the M in system when I tried to write the system out print line for that. So let's go back and resolve that. Save that. So let's compile it again. So this time there were no issues. And let's run it. Great. So now we can see that every single test step is a green light. In other words, everything was fine. There were no issues and Cucumber was able to match a given test step against a step definition code. So this is how Cucumber glues a step definition to features. So in this tutorial, we have learned how to get Cucumber to talk to code that we write for each given test step. And this is a really big milestone because now we can really start looking at using WebDriver for our Cucumber feature files. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, ciao. Hey guys, thanks ever so much for watching my video as I really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my latest videos and kindly like and share my videos as this is one of the best ways for me to grow my ever evolving channel. If you have any ideas or suggestions for this video series, then let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, ciao.